Does Bethesda even have a QA team? Come on. That's a lie, right? There's no shot. It's like one dude. I'm saying it. Anyway, let's watch Nakey Jakey's latest video. Bethesda's game design was outdated a decade ago. I have made not one, but two separate videos claiming that Blank's game design is outdated. And while I'm very proud of those videos and I pretty confidently stand by those critiques, I wasn't planning on ever using the same outdated title again because I just didn't want it to become this gross YouTuber-y series where I'm just the outdated guy. What is up gamers? Welcome back to part 39 of Outdated Stuff. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at this expired banana on my counter. If that ain't outdated, then <laughs> you better call the dog catcher because it must be raining cats and dogs out here. But when thinking about the past 10 years of Bethesda Game Studios catalog, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, a billion more versions of Skyrim, and now Starfield, there is not a more succinct or accurate word to describe how I feel about these games. I have personally made things that some people did not like and criticized, and that's great. Honestly, that's fine. That's exactly how it should be. Why am I saying that right now? Just to say that I know what it feels like. I want to make it clear that I have a lot of respect and appreciation for the hardworking individual devs that crunch 12-hour days to release AAA games on time that we all get to play. Thank you for making video games, everyone who makes video games out here in the prairie. So I promise I don't mean to be hyperbolic or dramatic just for the sake of it when I say I am truly baffled by Starfield. It is seriously shocking to see just how little this game attempts to improve or even successfully reuse the same formula and same Frankenstein game engine that Bethesda have been selling to their fans for well over a decade. I cannot understand how this is the space adventure Todd Howard has dreamt of making for 25 years and cooked in the oven for eight. But I wanted to try. I really wanted to understand. I wanted to love this troubled game so badly. And I stayed committed to this relationship for hours and hours and hours, ignoring every possible red flag that came my way. But I can't do it anymore. And I feel like I have to make this video if just purely for my own sanity. No, this one is for me because this damn space game changed me. People often describe Bethesda games as Bethesda games, but what does that even mean? In 2011, I would have said open world action RPG where you could go anywhere, do anything, good or evil, knight or wizard, but you're definitely gonna be a sneak archer like every single time without fail. To me, it meant giant world with total player freedom to do what they wanted to do. Don't like someone? Shoot them in the face. Want someone's stuff? Sneak behind their waist. Wanna climb that mountain? Hump it on the face. Fallout 3 was my first Betty game after convincing my dad that, nah, dude, it's not violent at all. You you don't have to be uh, violent. You could choose to be good and talk your way out of every situation. Which was total fucking bull crap. Yes, these games might be RPGs, but they heavily lean I've, on the action part. I have verbatim used that argument on my family. It didn't work, but I have verbatim, verbatim used that argument on my family. Of action RPG. Can you sometimes do quests non-violently? Definitely. But more often than not, your to-do list I also talked about, this is a fun time to remind chatters, that I told my dad at the dinner table, I remember it vividly. I'm living in Ankara at this point, capital of Turkey, not Istanbul, okay? And I remember playing the video game Freelancer, okay? Created by the creators of, uh, what is it, Starlight or whatever, the game that never came out and is a scam that NMP LOL is, uh, has uh, bought into. Star Citizen, sorry, okay. Yes, Ankara, the Ohio of Turkey. I'm sitting at a dinner table, and I'm having a conversation with my dad where I told him, Dad, Freelancer is so great. Freelancer had a lot of these, like, uh, you know, a lot of the freedoms, like you were flying around. It wasn't on rails, right? It was one of the earlier, like, sandbox-type space-faring adventures. Incredible space combat, but also a little bit of, like, going to different planets and walking around and having conversations with people. And I told my dad, dad, it's crazy. It's like I have friends in different galaxies where sometimes I'll see them in one galaxy and then later on in the game, I'll see them in a different galaxy and I get 
you know, I get caught up with what's going on in their lives. And my dad, I remember, thought that I was schizophrenic. I'm not even kidding. That's so sad. Man, shut up. It's a single-player game that I was playing when I was, like, fucking 12, okay? Whenever Freelancer came out. How old was I? Oh, God, it'd be really embarrassing if I was older than 12. Came out in, fuck, what year did it come out? 2003. Yeah, there you go. In 2003, which means I was, wait. Yeah, I was literally 12. Okay, thank God. I was literally 11 to 12. 11 going on 12, okay? Holy fuck. Okay, safe. Everybody, you're dunking on a 12-year-old. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, you got it day one. I know this trick. No, I got it day one because it was it was a illegal. Like it was all fucking pirated. Anyway, um, so yeah, when I had that conversation with my dad, he thought I was schizophrenic. This revolves around you killing people and things and spiders and ghouls, and there's usually not a whole lot of wiggle room around that part. A lot of the time, your choices are boiled down to, okay, so do you want to set them on fire first and then shoot them or just do them raw? If you play Fallout New Vegas made by Obsidian, those are some RPG-ass RPG choices where I feel like the player has way more freedom to express themselves morally, ethically, whatever, in a given quest. But as much as I gush about New Vegas on this channel, there is something missing in this game when compared to Fallout 3. Atmosphere. I think Bethesda typically crushes that shit. Even though New Vegas is a much better game mechanically, Betty's world felt a lot more engrossing to explore. Even if a lot of the supposed freedom promised to the player is kind of an illusion. You know, you can't actually kill anyone if they're an essential NPC for a quest line, they just take a nap on the floor. Still, Bethesda does a really great job at making you feel like you're on this grand adventure. And the soundtracks, dude, oh my god, the Skyrim soundtrack alone might be up there with Chrono Trigger for like the great greatest video game score ever made. All of these songs make you feel like you're living inside of an ancient blade made of suede. Oh my god, I'm getting really fucking tired of always coming home to this dude saying some more stupid crap. Hi, I'm Jakey, Jakey, and Jakey, attorneys, attorneys at, at law. law. Thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Is your browser boring? Does it make you want to go outside? No, don't go out there, there's wolves out there. Opera GX is a web browser for gamers that you can customize. In the GX store, or located <laughs> over here, you can get a variety of browser mods, such as my own, that have their own background reacts, music, reacts, keyboard sounds, reacts. opening and closing of tab sounds, theme and color of the browser itself, unique wallpaper. You can also disable and enable specific mods in the mods menu located on the sidebar. Does your web browser keep you informed on all things gaming? It doesn't? What the hell? With the GX corner located over here, Upper GX will keep you up to date with free games, the best deals, the hottest new releases, and gaming news all in one convenient corner. Look at this deal. Look at this deal. Are you seeing the deals? Look at the fucking deals, Derek. Don't worry about losing all your stuff from those other browsers. Opera GX has a handy import tool to quickly take all of your shit, like bookmarks and cookies and browsing history from your old rinky dink browser to your sexy new sports car browser. And Opera GX also works with every Google Chrome extension. If you download Opera GX using my special link located here or down below, you'll also have access to a unique feature where you'll see all of my 12 most recent videos in your GX corner, so you'll never miss it when I upload a new video in three months. Use this link located down below to download Opera GX today. Thanks again to Mr. GX for sponsoring this video. Now let's get on back to whatever the hell Super Nakio JKO64 is. To, he's counting stars. Let's, let's see if he counts all 120 of them. He probably didn't even do TikTok clock yet because he's a worthless piece of shit. But because Bethesda games are so unique and so dearly beloved by so many fans, People often give them a free pass when it comes to certain issues because, eh, it's a Bethesda game. What are you gonna do? Issues such as True. dated melee combat and extremely dated gun combat, even True. for the time. Brain dead enemy AI. Clunky UIs True. that always have to be fixed with mods. Optimization True. and performance issues that always have to be fixed with mods. Okay, this is making me feel like Bethesda. More like, instead of Bethesda, it's making me feel like it's called Myth Mid Bethesda. Enough bugs to fill a fucking terrarium that always have to be fixed with mods. If any other AAA shooter had the same issues that Fallout 3 had, where the guns barely even functioned and cast bullets from their mouths like spells from a wizard's sleeve, and the game ran at six frames per second on the PS3 because, oops, you saved too many times, don't do that, people would riot. But because these issues are part of a giant package and the appeal is usually greater than a sum of its janky parts, people just kinda go, eh. What are you gonna do? It's a Bethesda game. Which sure, maybe 
in 2008, maybe some of this stuff could be ignored. But it is not 2008 anymore. Hell, it is not even 2011, my brother. In a post-Skyrim world where they have re-released that game so many times and it has sold over 60 million copies now, the whole, but it's a Bethesda game, excuse is, you guessed it, shit from a butt. Fallout 4 was when I could no longer stay blind to Bethesda's strong reluctance to leave the caveman stone age prehistoric time. <laughs> Dude, you could still feel all of the typical creation jank underneath everything. You still had to edit an I&I &I file to change the FOV or turn off mouse acceleration. The physics were still tied to the frame rate. The load times could still go on for an eternity. But hey, at least they made guns function like kind of actual guns this time, which should be the bare minimum for a first person shooter in 2015. Meanwhile, Halo's 14 getting ready for her winter formal. Simple things for a shooter like swapping weapons or throwing grenades felt super unresponsive and wonky, like the game was constantly fighting you on every delayed input. And again, 2015, this, this wasn't like a long time ago. But man, I still played the shit out of this game and it is the- Dude, this video is making me- This video feels like I'm coming out of a cult. Like it literally- I, I feel like I'm, I'm being- I was brainwashed. My- I remember all of these games way more fondly than the way he's describing it. I mean, I guess it's because- It's because in spite of all of those issues, it was still fun. Fallout 4 is the most bare bones RPG. Where Fallout New Vegas went left toward old school traditional Fallout games, Fallout 4 was like, all right, so it's kind of like janky Minecraft, but with guns, which turns out is actually pretty fun. The gameplay loop of exploring a detailed Bethesda world filled with cool stuff, getting loot and supplies from fighting baddies and using vats, using those supplies to upgrade your guns, working on your settlements with the janky ass builder that also has to be fixed with mods. It was all pretty fun to me. Objectively, my critic brain is like, yeah, this game has a lot of flaws and the dialogue system really sucks and the perk tree sucks and the role playing options are basically non-existent. And the main story makes like zero sense if you stop and think about it because if someone was searching for their kidnapped baby son, why would they stop and help a bunch of other families first and eat a hundred rad roaches? But subjectively, my Bethesda brain is like, oh boy, I better scrounge up some more of these desk fans. Even with all its jank, and there is a lot of jank in Fallout 4, like any area downtown just straight up doesn't run well at all. For what it was, I had fun with Fallout 4. But what it was, was unfortunately a very crystal clear sign that Bethesda was falling behind the times harder than ever before. God also, damn. I went to kindergarten and first grade here and uh, walked home from school one day and realized we got out early because of 9-11. I don't know why I'm talking about that right now. <laughs> I wish I could say I was shocked when Fallout 76 turned out to be shit from a butt, but dude, I wasn't shocked at all. Not trying to be. Yeah, Fallout 76 was definitely you know, some cool guy cheese. shit, but the second I saw the reveal presentation and how it was gonna run on the same janky ass engine that barely manages to work as a single player game, and now it's gonna be multiplayer online, like www.com type online. Yeah, Todd, and I'll be a monkey's uncle. Oh, my sweet bimbo, you have returned. You all know this story. Game comes out, one of the worst launches ever. Bug Terrarium is like 16 times the detail. Bethesda gets super scummy about refunds and then get super scummy about pushing these overly priced microtransactions also cheaps out on the canvas bag that's supposed to be included in the collector's edition it was awful fallout 76 is like the poster child for taking advantage of a devout fan base and releasing a clearly unfinished faulty product i'll see a lot of people online chalk up 76's failure to well it wasn't todd and his main team that made the game it was their there was their b team people that... still buff starfield i did dude I think at the end of the day, it's the side quests that just keep it going. I Like, when I play a Bethesda game, I don't give a fuck about the main quest. Faction quests are just, they carry. Like, guild quests and faction quests are just so good. And the world just sucks you in. I play Starfield. I, play, I spend a shit ton of time. Exploration on Starfield, kind of mid. Which is ironic because exploration is the other part of Bethesda games that's awesome. That's what's weird about Starfield is that, like, they took out one of the fucking components that, like, made Bethesda games what it is. And what did they replace it with? Pronouns! Fucking pronouns! Bethesda! Fucking pronouns! Sorry.
I had to do that one time. We're doing fucking- That's to Austin, but I'm pretty sure that's not the full story. According to several- California shit! Anonymous devs that worked on 76, as quoted in this Kotaku article that you should check out, people from multiple Bethesda studios worked on this game. Senior staff from Fallout 4's team, staff taken away from the Starfield team, staff taken away from the Redfall team at Arcane, which Jesus Christ, that's a whole, that's a whole thing on its own. Jiminy Cricket and a jockstrap. 76, as described in this article, sounded like a massive live service black hole that no one wanted to touch. Because the writing was all over the bug covered walls that it was never going to end well. But in typical AAA game dev fashion, QA teams get treated like total shit and upper management ignores issues raised and continues. Does Bethesda even have a QA team? Come on. That's a lie, right? There's no shot. It's like one dude. You to force everyone to crunch toward this deadline they knew they were never gonna make. And yeah, Todd Howard may have not directed 76, but he's still listed as executive producer. And he's the one that went on the big stage and was like, this is the biggest fucking game we've ever made. It's 16 times awesome. You're all gonna nut. Yo, run that John Denver joint. And the pre-orders go crazy and everyone's hyped out of their minds. And then it comes out and it's atrocious. And suddenly now Todd is all, yeah, we knew it wasn't going to be like a high Metacritic score game, but you know what? It sold really well. It's not about how it starts. It's about what it becomes. Thank you very much. Yo, run that John Denver joint. <laughs> Come on, man. According to that same article, Todd was very adamant on the whole no NPCs feature, no matter how much the dev team pleaded that it was an insane choice for Bethesda. You know, the studio most closely associated with NPCs. But also, maybe Todd isn't the main bad guy responsible, you know? Maybe he was just under a lot of pressure from big money investors at parent company Zenimax to make a live service cash cow that would exploit fans and inevitably make a ton of money. I I don't know all the details, but there's enough breadcrumbs to make it insane to me that someone along the food chain with authority, whether Todd or otherwise, didn't stop and adamantly scream, Hey, uh, let's maybe delay this game permanently? But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Regardless of whose fault 76 was, the damage was done and the pressure was on. After an underwhelming and outdated Fallout 4 and an underbaked and severely malnourished Fallout 76, Bethesda really needed to reach for the Skyrim once again and dunk another classic into our laps. But Todd, he don't play basketball. He plays chess. I was the kid. I was writing games when I was, you know, 12, whatever. And uh, the other kids in the block would say, you know, yeah, if Elder Scrolls 6 is not on a new engine, it's, it's Jover. I, 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 that's it. Bethesda. You can put all the pronouns you want. You can put Xenogender in that shit. It don't matter. I'm going to play quarterback for the Cowboys, and I'll be like, I'm going to make video games, and everyone's going to play them. Like, you dork. Go back to the chess club. Who's laughing now? I've, I've seen all of these videos so many times. Oh, my God. I feel like I've also heard Nakey Jakey make this commentary, almost identical commentary, before in other videos. This is like his yes, final. This is like his the, his final masterpiece uh, of just like one last strike ac uh, across the bow. Like it's just this is the final. This is the final hit. Club. <laughs> it's hard not to like Todd Howard. He has this Michael Scott type charisma that's weirdly hard to resist. And I find his story of repeatedly applying to Bethesda only to be rejected over and over really inspiring. Cause once he got his leather jacket ass wearing ass through that door. You almost got canceled last time you watched this video. You, something, you said something very not funny. Yeah, some of you love, some of you love trust in the white man or something. What the fuck did I say? And then people got so mad at me and they were like, I can't believe he would make a joke about a, a video game Starfield being made by a white man. Hassan hates white man. That was the funny ass fucking fake cancellation. God, I hate. God, I fucking hate everyone online so much. It, it objectively the worst scumbags hate me. Just like it, it is a it is an assortment of the absolute worst stupid fucking scumbags that basically just like rip half of their commentary from fucking Reddit. Distillation of the worst redditors of all time get together and they're like, "Wow, this guy
Oh, I was so right about Starfield, even though I liked it myself. Oh, my fucking Lord. Okay. He would direct Morrowind, executive produce Oblivion, direct both Fallout 3 and Skyrim. Love him or hate him, the man's resume speaks for itself. And good God, would you look at that jacket. For being considered AAA. Bro, there was a person that literally bought Starfield angrily and wrote in the Steam review. Wrote in the fucking Steam review that they bought it to piss me off. Like that's how there was like a there was like a Steam review, remember, of of a dude who was like, I bought this to piss off that Assam Piker fuckbag. He hates white people. Hey, Bethesda is not a very big studio. Around a hundred people made Skyrim, and they currently only employ like 420 people across all of their studios. For comparison, at least a thousand people worked on GTA 5 before its release, and 6,000 different people have worked on it since, which is crazy to me considering how slow GTA Online still is. On the one hand, I think it's really impressive that Bethesda is much smaller than other big name studios because it means hub? they must have some really powerful paladins over there casting some serious buffs. But also when you're making that- Is what I would say if I was a consumer of pornography, which I'm not, I was just testing you guys. And a lot of you failed. Oh, fucking got him. Let's get AAA money and your games continue to come out janky as shit. Maybe hire some more fucking people to make your games actually function properly when you sell them for $70. One source from that same article said, Bethesda is a big company that thinks it's a small company with a mentality of, well, this worked in the 90s, so we're just going to keep doing it. I mean, yeah, after playing Starfield, that's definitely what it feels like. Boy, I'll tell you what, I, I booted that song bitch up it was like it was like seeing an ex for the first time in eight years a poorly optimized ex who struggles to have human-like facial expressions starfield isn't even just skyrim again but in space which was always todd's elevator pitch no it would be such an improvement if it was but no this is not a bethesda game based on the definition the dumbass by the piano gave earlier that signature bethesda open world exploration and sense of scale and freedom and that feeling of ooh, there's something interesting around every corner gone but Jarbo, there's like a thousand planets. How can it get any more procedural generation? Yeah, and you want to know what you do on 99%. I fucking told you this was my biggest lock of Starfield. I stand by that shit. That was my biggest lock. Procedurally generated fucking worlds are going to be empty as fuck, and it's going to absolutely suck ass. And it did. And I was right, and I called it. Okay, it's just barren wastelands. Guess what? Guess what I didn't call, though? I thought at least, like with Mass Effect, you'd be able to drive around the empty space. And Todd was like, nah. Actually, you don't even get to drive around. You have to run everywhere. You have to run everywhere and try to jetpack to make things faster. Hassan Piker is a fucking racist idiot. We Reflection trust. of the incredible okay. and passionate team that made it. Damn, dude. Y'all fucking, y'all ride that dick. You guys are, you guys are riding the dick of white men, okay? White men that have lied to you in the past. They've lied to you and they've led you astray and they've hurt your feelings and you're still riding it. Apparently you can't get behind Starfield because the man behind it, Todd Howard, is a white man. That's so funny. They always look like this. Look at these fucking gremlins, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, that was a joke about how Todd has lied to you and me as well as a big Bethesda, Bethesda fan. How can you not get that that's a joke? Dude, dude, dude. <laughs> I think a lot of people need to remember that there's a lot of gross motherfuckers out there, okay? Maybe most of us will be that gross motherfucker if, like, things were 3 4% different in our lives, okay? And the internet is a perfect place to gather all these gross motherfuckers together. <laughs> Someone said redophile build, like, pedophile, but with Reddit. I love that. Yeah, straight up. That's usually how this works. There's a lot of gross dudes out there. There's a lot of gross dudes out there, and they get together online, and they're like, mm, mm, Percent of those it. thousand planets. This, you walk, 
and walk and walk and sprint and jump and jetpack jump and get really good at watching your O2 sprint meter go up and down and up and down. There is yep. no rover to drive. There is no ship to fly. You just walk and walk and walk until you get to the most copy pasted structure that it's you true. have already seen a bunch of times. Starfield is the exploration equivalent of holding the player two controller that isn't actually plugged in. It is the illusion of planetary exploration duct taped together by a thousand loading screens and a strong desire to waste so much of your time. Let's talk about fast travel. Can you say fast travel? Fast travel. Can you say loading screen? Loading screen. Loading screen. Loading screen before fast travel? After fast travel. Loading screen. Fast traveling to complete a quest. Fast traveling to start a quest. That's so silly. Loading screen. <gasps> Peekaboo, loading screen. Can you say fast travel? Wasting your time? No. <sighs> Wasting my time? Yes. 2023? Bethesda released this in 2023. Oh no. Can you say leather jacket? In other Bethesda games, mm. you wanted to walk to your destinations because fast traveling meant you might miss out on some neat dungeon or cool, unique structure or wacky enemy along the way. Yeah, don't worry. There's none of that in Starfield. <laughs> Not only is fast travel highly recommended whenever possible in Starfield, but it is straight up required. You cannot fly your ship from planet to planet or even on a single planet. You can enter your ship with a nice loading screen and then sit in your pilot's chair with a nice unskippable animation and then take off with another nice loading screen and then pick your destination from space and fast travel there with another loading screen and then click on the planet to land with another loading screen or if your destination is in space do another unskippable animation to dock your ship followed by another immediate loading screen but hopefully if you've already discovered the specific location you want to go to you can just fast travel straight there the second i realized i was avoiding my ship whenever possible you know the central core part of a space exploration game it was over the most heartbreaking part is that the shipbuilder is fucking amazing it's yes. like virtual legos it is by far the best new thing but which by the way also kind of difficult to work around on the steam deck at least but it is uh, at first it's like a little confusing but when you figure out how to do it it's awesome and it was it was so sick except the only thing that your shipbuilding helps you with is it lets you fast travel further and it stopped you from accessing other fast travel points that you could only get to later down the line in the fucking video game it's so stupid Bethesda did with this game. But where do you get to fly your ship that you just lovingly spent three hours making? In orbit! Yay! Let's fucking go! If you want to see your magnificent creation actually move around and fast travel on up to space and float around fighting bad guys and running away from cops with the awful bounty system, which I... We'll get to later. I will spend oh way God, too much time talking was... about that later. What's really weird is that between the different elements... But yeah, look at all the exploration, dude. On every fucking planet, there's more space junk that you are not going to have enough space in your, in your trunk to carry. That's right. There's never enough carry. There's too much carry limits. There's too many carry limits in a game like this. Yeah. All the rocks that you fucking took... Yeah, that's... Yeah, put that in the spaceship. Guess what? Oops. Now... Now it doesn't fit. You don't have enough space. You're encumbered. Elements you can mine on planets and the different things you can prioritize within the shipbuilder. There's enough breadcrumbs here to assume that at one point Starfield was probably more of a survival type space game. Meaning that landing on a planet maybe served more of a purpose than just sort of wandering around aimlessly. Maybe the temperature changes in extreme conditions actually mattered more than they currently do, which is like... Not really at all. The shipbuilder even has options to upgrade the fuel tanks or a grav drive so that you can jump further into a system. But if you don't upgrade those things, that's fine too. You'll just yeah. have to fast travel to a closer system at first yeah. and then so fast travel stupid. to the one you actually want to go to. So upgrading that stuff in your ship just saves you from seeing two loading screens and now you only see one. <laughs> 
How is this game real? Starfield has a thousand planets. Also, worst UI of all time. Oh my god. And I wish it had like five. Yeah, not every planet in real life space would have a bunch of cool stuff on it either. Yeah, duh. But that's not my point. My point is that this is not really a good illusion of anything other than the unfortunate passage of time. No Man's Sky can also have some boring ass procedurally generated planets. But you know what? At least you can actually fly to them. Playing Starfield is like watching a magician pull a rabbit out of a hat, but every time he's about to do it, he's like, no, no, you gotta close your eyes while I do it though. But what about perform, what the f I'm not a Best Buy Geek Squad looking ass. Don't say I am. Starfield may have been made with the shiny new Creation Engine 2, but you ain't fooling anyone with that 2, Todd. You I like that. I feel like the Creation Engine 2, the 2 was just for, the 2 basically was a stand-in for the physics are cranked up in every item for no reason whatsoever. <clears throat> like, I feel like they just, they made like a tech demo for an engine that has physics for every single item, which makes no sense. Like, I would much rather not have as many loading screens and have a seamless experience than to have a thousand cheese slices with physics for all of them, okay? With the engine trying to fucking hold that shit together. It's very shocking that they spent so much time on it, which is weird. That's not unique at all, and it is a thing functionally any and every physics engine can do. I no, I don't think so. I feel like it's it's more realistic than any other game I've ever played as far as like that goes. I can't think of any game where you can literally grab 1000 fucking sandwiches from your inventory and just like dump it. I think in most circumstances like a lot of that shit uh, they they stick a lot of that stuff specifically so that it doesn't become such a costly endeavor, which I would rather do that may have slapped a spoiler on it but it's still a fucking geo metro i'm still editing an i and i file just to change the fov or turn off mouse acceleration to make aiming feel better i'm still clicking on doors and seeing that all too familiar fade out loading screen all the time why did you not optimize this game for pc oh this was a great take uh we did it's running great it is a next gen pc game we really do push the technology so you may need to upgrade your PC for this game, but it's got a lot of great stuff going. Cyberpunk slapped on the Steam Deck, by the way. Unplayable. Starfield, unplayable on the Steam Deck, especially if you went into a city. Cyberpunk, on the other hand, seamless experience. Incredible. Just, just incredible to think about. Going on in it, and the fans are responding awesome. All right, Todd, I've upgraded my PC. But I still can't turn on HDR or even mess with the brightness settings, even though the Xbox version already has HDR. And to get a decent frame rate, I have to use upscaling, but I have an NVIDIA card, and you only have FSR supported with no DLSS. Oh, someone already modded DLSS into the game within, like, a couple days? Oh, programmers are making comprehensive breakdowns on Reddit detailing just how poorly optimized the game is? Nah, if Todd said it's optimized, then it's probably optimized. I believe him. I will follow my Nord brother into the pearly gates of Sovereign God and found it Raise my hand upon that holy leather. Breaking news, as of November 15th, Bethesda is finally patching Starfield, adding an FOV slider, poorly implemented HDR, and much needed DLSS support. Along with clear massive performance gains for both CPU and GPU areas, it's almost as if the game did in fact launch very unoptimized. The timing couldn't be better, two months after everyone already stopped playing it. This game hurts my stupid giant head. I can't understand it. I can't seem to do anything right after experiencing this so called called game completely unrelated skyrim together modders aren't making a multiplayer mode for starfield but the code is now open source in case anyone wants to take over the modding team behind skyrim together has announced it is canceling the work on the starfield multiplayer update that's crazy they were like fuck it the modders are saying we're not doing it anymore Dude, when the modders give up, it's done. It's oh Joker. my god, I didn't even bring that up yet. God damn it. In Starfield, you can build settlements, and you have more freedom than ever with the builder, but there's not a whole lot of motivators to interact with it other than harvesting resources from a planet largely void of life. Add that to the super confusing structure of actually trying to connect your settlements across star systems and all the fast travel screens in between and your ship cargo and your inventory and getting over encumbered and ugh. The Fallout 4 it wasn't fun because the builder was good. Hell no. It's janky as hell and super frustrating. But it was fun because you yeah. were bringing life back into the apocalypse and building off 
of really cool existing unique structures so that the dumbass settlers could take back the land. But all of that was powered by the initial core desire of actually wanting to go out and explore and shoot stuff. Oh yeah, that's right. You shoot guns in this game. Uh, Starfield also has guns. Okay, I don't know if he's going to shit on the gunplay. I do feel like a lot of the takes that you give in this area are kind of ignorant, though. You're too old and too unfamiliar with the video game industry to understand there are more issues at play than at the top of the hour. There's a three-minute ad break. You didn't even try to incorporate that into your debate, dude. You fucking asshole. Gunplay's fine on Starfield. They actually did a decent job with the gunplay, in my opinion. Also, fuck you. Also, if you no longer want to see those fucking ads, all you need to do is subscribe. Suck my dick, chatter. Here's a three-minute ad break now. Starfield has perks just like Fallout 4. Oh my god. And one of those perks is I called forgot Rapid about. Reload, and it does exactly what you... Xylax, thank you for the 20 gifted subs. ...think it would do. It makes your reloads faster. At least that's what it should do. I'm a gamer. I like going fast. F*** it. Throw it on, Todd. Send, send me the bill. It's on the, it's on the house. Days later, I'm playing the game, and I throw my last grenade. I reload my gun, and it's way faster than usual. What's going on here? Come to find out, that perk hasn't worked the entire time I've had it, because evidently, if I have any sort of throwable equipped rapid reload, it just doesn't work. I thought maybe I was alone, but nope. I looked it up, and apparently it's a common bug that, at least as of November 15th, still persists. Also, you know that text that appears at the top of the screen in Bethesda games when you're doing stealth that says hidden? Not only does this 2023 game use the same bare-bones stealth mechanics that are like 20 years old at this point, seeing that text up top, that's a perk now. And you can spend another whole ass perk point, and I quote, to upgrade the stealth meter, which just shows you if you're being close to being detected, which is basically exactly what the eye reticle thing already did in Skyrim. Well, this is way better and worth spending the point, trust me. The gunplay in Starfield is an improvement over Fallout 4, but yeah. that's like saying a bicycle is an improvement over a Razor scooter. It's still not an AK-47. The guns generally work a bit better with less delay. You're a bit more agile. You have a jetpack, which sometimes that can be fun. But as a shooter in 2023, this game is still getting- Oh, the AI is dog shit, as always. Lapped by games from 2012. Hell, games from 2007, 2004. I'm serious, sit down, play Starfield for an hour, and then go boot up Far Cry 3, or Bioshock, or Call of Duty 4, or any game in the orange box, and then go back to Starfield and tell me how it feels. Especially on controller, it just feels wrong. Fallout 4's shooting was barely serviceable only because of everything that surrounded it. It worked good enough because you got to explore a cool map and frequently fight cool, varied enemies using vats. In Starfield, the cool map is gone, the enemies are sometimes varied, but it is predominantly no, yeah. brain-dead humanoid space pirates that will just stand there and let you shoot them and that Vats doesn't exist anymore so the act of shooting someone needed to feel really really good throw in the still clunky melee combat the super unintuitive ui of menus inside of menus and the d-pad weapon swapping from fallout 4 because apparently having a weapon wheel might make the creation dude that oh my god oh my god oh my god the fucking user interface Oh my fucking, oh my God. Oh my God, how? How? Okay, that, oh Jesus. Yes, the combat is fucking dog shit in comparison to Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk also like locks you into first person though, even though it does a much better job. Uh, so there's that, at least in Starfield you have like third person and then far away third person. God, the fucking user interface. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's so bad. Yeah, it's worse. It, it is somehow worse than, than uh, Breath of the Wild. I don't know how they did that. How did they do that? Explode. And what you have is a worse version of something that you have already played eight years ago. All right. So what about quests? Bethesda has always been so strongly associated with NPCs and quests. Here's an example of the most common basic ass type of quest in Skyrim. Hey, can you go to this dungeon and kill a bad guy? All right. Sounds good. You know what? I'm even just going to walk over there because it's not that far. Whoa. What's this? A dragon in this economy? Well, I mean, I'm here. I may as well ladder stall Tom hawk the dragon real quick all right that's done um what what was i did oh right the dungeon oh well, hold, hold on a second there's a cave right here 
I mean, I'm here. I'm 20 minutes later. All right, that was a pretty cool cave, and I, I feel like I got some cool shit out of that. Uh, anyways, uh, oh, the dungeon. All right, let me just stealth archer these freaks real quick. Get some loot. Okay. I'm done. That was a pretty enjoyable, fun hour of gameplay I just got to experience. Here's an example of the most common basic ass type of quest in Starfield. Hey, we lost our scientist friends. Can you go find him? We don't know where he is because we don't have any walkie talkies or email or texting or, or cell phones in this, in this planet, in this world. Yeah, sure, I guess, all right, damn. He's kind of, he's kind of out there. Whatever. I'm sure some cool stuff will happen along the way. Five minutes later. Man, I sure am getting pretty good at sprinting and jetpacking and, you know, I, I bet the cave will have like a cool monster in it or something once I get there. No. Oh, it's literally just you. Uh, now I have to take you back with me? Well, okay, apparently I can just fast travel back, but I don't take you with me. So I just went to tell you that your friends are looking for you and now you're finding your own way back and going back. So why the hell did I even need to come find you in the first place? What the hell even is this game? Okay, that's a bit unfair. I will say that like the side quests are the only thing that fucking carries the game. It's nowhere near as fun nor interesting nor diverse as like the previous he gave. Obviously, it's more the spontaneity is gone. However, there are some decent there are some decent side quests. Like, there are. There are decent side quests. Game, dude. I shit you not, that type of quest pops up all the time. And even if it is an Operation Go Rescue Baby Scientist, it is something similarly mindless and uninspired. A lot of quests in Starfield just play out as a game of fast travel telephone, where you talk to one person and they're like, hey, go tell this person in another galaxy that I said this. And you're like, okay, and you go through several fast travel loading screens and land on a place and go through another loading screen and then walk through a city and get to another place to talk to them. And then you finally talk a lot to the that. person and they're like, well, tell them that I said this. And so you do all of that again and you go through all the fast travel loading screens and the loading screens and the entering building loading screens and you're like, all right, well, they said this. And it's like, is this what we're doing now? Like if I'm like eight years old and you told me like take all the graphics and stuff away that like, hey, this is what video games are gonna be like. I'd be like, what the fuck? And this game is not a super in-depth choice, complex, branching, narrative, rich dialogue CRPG. Like I don't expect that from Bethesda and that's fine, I, I never have. But if you're not- Only one I can think of is the Crimson Quest was decent, not even as good, just as decently, not as bad as the rest. No, the Crimson, Crimson Quest was awesome. Come on, dude. The fact that you can uh, choose either side as well, like that shit is, that, that shit was great. Crimson Fleet was incredible. Not that, and you're also not successfully doing the thing that largely defines your games, aka satisfying and rewarding open world exploration, then what the hell even are you? Like, I don't know what genre I would even call this game. Oh no, I'm being... Hold up, we're gonna collect on a bounty. Oh man, we're, we'll talk, we're gonna talk about the bounty in, in a bit. That's really funny timing. All right, well. <laughs> Sorry, gaming. Before the game came out, Phil Spencer, Xbox guy, uh, said something along the lines of, I don't remember exactly, but it was like, ah, oh, I played it so many hours, whatever. I'm going full space pirate. And I got excited when I heard this because I love game systems that let you fuck around and find out. I'm sure some of you remember how I obsessed over the wanted bounty system in Red Dead 2 because I just love pushing things and trying to understand how they mechanically work. <laughs> What? Am I? Why is it? Huh? No, the video still is not muted. Did he get hit with a copyright? No fucking way. No, he got hit with a copyright, so he deleted it. Or, or he had the fucking... Oh, he got copyright claimed. Hey, we don't actually want to throw you in jail, but we want you to be an informant in the uh, space pirate fleet departed style. You fucking rat. What? Do 
actually what did that. It was a total bloodbath. Like I killed so many dudes and I racked up such a high bounty, but I noticed that a lot of the named NPCs wouldn't actually die when I shot them, which was a bit concerning, but I, I just kept on fighting. And eventually I fought my way all the way into the cockpit and there was a second where I was like, Shit, am I about to hijack this police ship and get the fuck out of oh, here? Oh yeah, nope. you can't do that. Can't can't fly this ship. And before yeah. people go in the comments and say, "Oh, it's because you got to upgrade your pilot license." No, thing. you nope. still can't. Y you still can't fly it. You can't fly this yeah, ship. Yeah, there's a lot of iconic ships that I I tried flying. Like I tried desperately. Like there was a one. There was one. There was like an assassination mission where the dude had like one of the sickest spaceships with like the coolest stuff in it, and. And I tried flying it and it was just like, nope. Or a whole lot of other ships for that matter, no matter what, just like you can't kill a lot of NPCs, no matter what, because Bethesda wants you to do space their way. This ship, bowl ship, <laughs> uh, isn't exclusive to just that quest either. If you've played the game, you know that a lot of the times when you land on a planet, another ship will coincidentally land around the same time and you can see would you still recommend trying the game out? I mean, if you like Bethesda games, like you'll like it. If you if you don't mind the system, then yeah. Them and run over there and fight them. And you would assume, ah, I just killed all these pirates. All right, logical next step: loot the ship, take the ship. But a lot of the time, not yeah. every time, but a lot of the time, at least for me, it just wouldn't let me. Most of the time, I just saw this prompt and I I didn't know why. So that bounty I mentioned during the shootout with the space cops, yeah, it's very easy to quickly rack up a very high bounty in this game. And whenever you travel to a planet that has a major city, they do a forced contraband oh scan God, on the ship I before you can land. Do I even like video games anymore? They also check to see if you have a bounty in that. Except the contraband situation is like relatively easy to avoid. You just. It's not going to make you spend endless fun hours, but you won't regret playing it. Yeah, it's a it's a solid 7 out of 10 game. But, but of course, the expectation is a 10 out of 10 game. So it's like, nope. Um, But yeah, you just go to Wolf, uh, Planet Wolf or whatever, and they don't have any uh, bounties there or they don't have any contraband. So you can just like offload all of your shit there and then fly in. That star system. Contraband can be hidden to help avoid detection on the scan, but it requires having hidden cargo space on your ship. Why am I here? Why am I doing any of this? Normal items that you can pickpocket or steal aren't marked as contraband, but they are marked as stolen items and they have this little red icon, but contraband icon, contraband, oh, contraband it's items yellow. always have this orange icon because it means they're extra illegal. Help me. So let's start here. Say you want to be a grimy little space thief, so you're constantly pickpocketing and stealing stuff. But it wherever. doesn't matter because it, like, the, the red items trigger your contraband too. You in typical Bethesda fashion, a lot of the time, if you're sneaking and stealing, you won't get caught stealing. Hope you spent the perk point on the stealth thing, but oops, sometimes you just do get detected even if no one is around to witness you murder that person except that person, or no one is around to witness you steal that cup except that cup. Suddenly, everyone in the galaxy knows that it was specifically you that stole that cup, even though apparently cell phones or email or fax machines or texting don't exist based on the context of most of our fucking quest objectives. I don't want to do this anymore. Please let me go. So now you have a bounty in that star system and then you're like, well, fuck, if I already have the bounty, then I, I guess I'll just I'll just keep doing it. And if anyone gets in my way, I'll shoot him because I'm a freak. That's my identity now. I'm a freak. I wasn't born this way, but I was molded by Todd and his, uh, and his leather. So you're traveling around, stealing stuff from all these planets, trying to have a grand old time and your bounty is getting pretty stacked. But oh shit, there's a main story mission in a city that you haven't been to yet in a star system that you have that giant bounty in. You get scanned, the cops are pissed. You can choose to fight them off and grab drive fast travel away, but if you wanna ever enter that city, you're gonna have to do something about that bounty. So you warp back and this time you're like, all right, well, I can't pay the bounty because it's insane, so I guess take me to jail. And when you go to jail in this game, the cops will not only remove every single item from your inventory that was ever stolen, which slowly <laughs> lists away at the top of the screen one by one, which this, yeah. this is never explained in the game as like some lore accurate space technology that tracks ownership. It's just magic where a cop four planets away knows that you stole this specific pen. But your punishment for jail time is an XP debt. It will never lower your current level, but it will erase any current XP progress that you've made towards leveling up and potentially even put you into the negative as well if it's high enough. Which it will be. This is kind of like how jail time in Oblivion could randomly lower some of your skills. Starfield says, hey, we know we can't actually force the player to sit in a jail cell, but we want there to be some sort of consequence for it being bad. And part of me is like, damn, that's actually kind of interesting and creative 
Except leveling up takes a long ass time in this game. For example, to level from level 10 to level 11, it's around 900 XP and it only gets exponentially more grindy the higher you get. So if you have a high bounty, which is not hard to get, you will be in this much debt. Have fun crawling out of that hole, you filthy little pirate bitch. It's also worth noting that much like a lot of stuff in this game, this mechanic is barely explained at all, and the only way to realize that you are in XP debt or track it is to look at the status screen. I understand having some sort of punishment for doing something bad and getting caught. I, I really do. But when leveling is this grindy, and the perks you get from leveling up don't actually work, or just straight up aren't worth it, and the game requires you to be scanned in order to land on certain planets because you can't. I think one of the saddest parts is like some of the perks are just like, they're like literally quality of life adjustments for the game, and you just have to grind it so you can get this thing that is literally a necessity. And, and you literally have to grind the perk as well. Can't actually just fucking fly the ship to the planet in this goddamn space game. Being punished this harshly for choosing a playstyle that is supposed to be viable in this so-called RPG is just super disappointing. Starfield would be a disappointment regardless of whatever year it came out, but unfortunately for Bethesda, 2023 was obscenely stacked with fantastic games in each of those specific genres that Starfield takes turns cosplaying as. It is an open world exploration game with little to no actual meaningful exploration. It is a glorified looter shooter that is still catching up to games that are now old enough to be in high school. And it is a role playing game with so few meaningful roles to actually play and relationships to engage with. I really want to like this game. I, I just wish that Baldur's Gate had like some way of making it not be turn based. I know. I just can't I can't get into turn-based combat. Like I wish there was a like a Kotor style. I wish there was a Kotor style way of doing it. I know everybody gets so mad when I say this. Cuz Baldur's Gate's story is fucking awesome. Speaking of Baldur's Gate fans, here he is. No pixel in 4.0 in 3 days. Uh I don't know. Oh my god, you're the worst. Turn base is fine, you baby. Give it a shot, bro. A lot of people who weren't fans of turn base tried it and loved it. Guys, I don't know why people get mad at me for this. Like, it's just, I just can't do turn base. Like, it fucking cooks me. I used to be the same way, but I really did get used to it. Of all the shit you've said, that is the most offensive. I know, man, I know. The only turn base game. The only turn-based game I fuck with is Pokemon. I am always going to cheer for Todd and Bethesda because they have given me so many amazing, memorable experiences for the past 20 years that have largely influenced my love for gaming. I want the next Elder Scrolls game to knock it out of the park. I will- You said Kodor's turn-based, but it's like, it's like VATS. Knights of the Old Republic is like a VATS-style system as well. Or- uh, what was it, Dragon's Dogma or Dragon Age? Like, you just queue it up, which is what I used to do. Kodor is just a D20 system. It's literally D&D. Man, I... You mean real time with pause? I guess. I've been holding off on playing the last Yakuza game because it's turn-based. Like, I've been worried about how I'm going to feel about it always root for anyone trying to make an ambitious video game. But after seeing what Bethesda has put out over the last decade, I just couldn't contain these thoughts and feelings any longer. I hope this video was at least kind of interesting or at the very least digestible in a way that sort of made sense, even though I feel like I should be in the psych ward. If you could still see me right now. For me, for Baldur's Gate, the biggest issue was I played Bard thinking that I could do like funny character and everyone else will carry and it was so fucking hard and I just kept dying over and over again and I would have to do the combat over and over again in like literally the first mission and it was annoying as fuck no bard is so OP no they just kept one tapping me dude they kept one tapping my ass and then fucking up my entire they kept one tapping my ass 
and fucking up my entire crew. And, and basically I couldn't get through like the first fights. And I just like, I, I kept playing it over and over again. Nothing feels strong until like level five. Yeah. Early game really kicked me out of it. Especially because, um, you just keep repeating the very limited actions that you have early on. Cause like you're too low level. So you don't have a lot of different skills, especially as Bard. You don't have a lot of different skills that you can utilize. And like, they're just cooking you. Thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you next time. This is actually my off-road ball because when I was filming the uh, campfire scenes, my dumbass didn't realize that a yoga ball that I've been using for like six years uh, shouldn't go out in the woods where there's like prickly goat head things and I popped a bunch of holes in it. But fortunately my sister, the same one that I stole the original yoga ball from, had another gray yoga ball uh, that's like got a bunch of ribs <laughs> on it. Uh, so this is my, this is my off-road ball. Also, I only realized recently that there's like no aliens in Starfield, like big eyed gray fuckers from signs, not a single one. That was fire. Respect.